This video covers basic chart line chart. The structure of this video is as follows. Visual code walkthrough, JavaScript code build, and the summary. All right, let's get started. Visual code walkthrough. We will use the TSV data from the d3js.org website line chart example. We will save this data into a file called data.tsv. This file will be located in the folder where we will run the Python simple HTTP server command. This file is the one that will be loaded asynchronously using the d3.tsv request functionality. We will walk through the d3.js code together. We start at the top of the document. First is the document type declaration. This tells the browser how to render the page in a standards compliant mode. This specific doc type is the correct declaration for HTML5. Next comes the meta character set. This sets the character set to UTF-8. If you are using non-minified d3.js, this is important because the d3 JavaScript file needs this particular type of encoding. The next section is the style definition of the document. We haven't spoken too much about style yet, as to me that comes after the basic framework is built. The little that we have covered should help us understand this section. The CSS defines the style for the body element. Here the CSS specifies that the font should be 10 pixels tall and should use a sans serif font. The next section defines the style for the axis path and line. The dot axis path and the dot axis line are both HTML classes that have a style associated with them. Here the code is saying no fill, a stroke of hash mark 000, which is the HTML color for black. And finally, telling the browser that the SVG content should be the shape rendering attribute of crisp edges. The next section defines the style for the X axis path. Here the code is specifying that we do not want to display the path. Why not just not draw it? Because the code later uses the d3.axis functionality that auto generates the axis tick marks, spacing, and line to connect all the ticks. So rather than having to figure out how to not have the d3.axis functionality not draw the line that connects all the ticks, the CSS just hides it. The next section defines the style for the line that will be the path generated by the data. The fill is set to none and uses the stroke width to give the line some depth so that it is seen on the screen. The stroke color of the line is defined as steel blue, and that is the end of the styling. Why separate the code when D3 makes it easy to attach style and fill attributes? Because we want to keep a separation of concerns. The D3 JavaScript code gets, manipulates, and figures out how to display the data. The CSS style code defines how to style the DOM elements once they are displayed. Next, we go into the JavaScript sections of the document. First, we load the d3.js code from the web. You can use this or a local version for personal and educational projects. If you're doing a commercial project, you should use your own version hosted on your own server or content delivery network. This ensures that you're always using the same version you want to use. Next, we go into the heart of the D3 code. We've seen this code before. This is the D3 margin convention. It specifies what margins the inner drawing space will have in order to offset it from the overall SVG container. Then the width and height for the inner drawing space are defined in terms of the margins and the overall width and height of the SVG container. The SVG container will be 500 pixels tall by 960 pixels wide. Next, we have D3 code that is new to us. The idea behind this code is that it will take a string formatted in the way specified and convert it into a JavaScript date object. When we covered the D3 time formatting, we went over a few of what the different letters mean. These formatting helpers are modeled after the C library standards and the Python time module. This takes in a string that has a date, then a dash, then the three letter code for a month, then a dash, and finally a two digit number for the year. Next, we have a time scale function for the x axis data. This code will create a scaling function where the range goes from 0 to the width of the inner drawing space. We will set the domain later after we have loaded in the data. Next, we have a scale linear function for the y axis data. This code will create a scaling function where the range goes from the height of the inner drawing space to 0. 
y backwards because this inverts the SVG coordinate space along the y axis. Let me repeat that. This inverts the SVG coordinate space along the y axis, which means that the origin point will now be at the bottom left instead of the top left. So as the y axis variable grows, it will move up rather than down. Next, we create the x axis function. We pass in the x scale function we created earlier and then give the axis an orientation of bottom. This means that the text will be below the line. Though in this case, if you remember that we define the CSS style of the path as display none, we won't see a line. So we'll just see the text. One question that might come up, how can we pass in the x scale function before we give it a domain? The reason we can do this is because the x scale function is a function. Until we call it, we can continue to modify the function. So the x axis function itself now contains the x scale function. Nothing is executed until the x axis function itself is called. Then we create the y axis the same way. We pass in the y scale function we created earlier and give the axis an orientation of left. This orientation will make the axes vertical and make the text appear on the left of the line. Next, the code defines the D3 path generation function. This uses the D3 path data generator functionality. For X values and Y values, the code defines specific accessor functions. The data set we are looking at is comprised of dates and closing prices for the Apple stock, which means the X values access the date from the data passed in through an anonymous function, while the Y values access the stock price close from the data passed in through an anonymous function. This creates another function which will be called later. The next code creates the SVG container and the inner drawing space. We have seen this code many times now. First, the code selects the body and then appends an SVG container. Then, the code defines the width and height attributes of the SVG container in terms of the inner drawing space width and height and the relevant margins. Then, the code appends an SVG group element, which will be the inner drawing space. This inner drawing space is transformed translated to the right and down by the relevant margins. All of this is assigned to the variable SVG, which everything else in the code will use as the reference drawing space. The next code is where the D3 code magic happens. This is where D3 does an XHR type specific call to the server to get the data.tsv file. Once the server responds with the file, the D3.tsv function calls the callback function with two arguments, the error and the data. In this case, the callback function is an anonymous function. Let's go through the callback function section by section. First, we have code that iterates through the array of JavaScript objects. For each JavaScript object, it does two things. One, it converts the date string to a JavaScript date object, and two, it converts the closing price from a string to a number. The D3 for each iteration method is used on the data array. It is an iteration method D3 provides for iterating through a JavaScript array. It applies the function specified to each element of the array. In this case, it is applying an anonymous function to each element of the array. So it redefines the values it finds to the same keys in the same objects. This is to convert the data to a more usable type of data. Since each element of the array is a JavaScript object, the code iterates through the JavaScript objects and redefines the values for the keys date and close. The parse date is the function we defined earlier. This takes in a string and using the format we specified, it creates a new JavaScript date object. Then it assigns it right back to the d.date key. The plus sign in front of the d.close converts the string to a number. This is a quick way to convert a string to a number in JavaScript. Next, we set the domain for the xscale function. Now that we have the data, we can set the domain of the xscale function by using the d3.extent method. This returns an array containing the minimum and maximum dates. An anonymous function is used to get the date out of the data objects. Next, we set the domain for the y scale function. Now that we have the data, we can set the domain for the y scale function by using the d3.extent method. This returns an array containing the minimum and maximum close prices. An anonymous function is used to get the close out of the data objects. 
Next, we call the d3.axis operator for the x-axis. First, the code appends an SVG group element to hold the x-axis. Then the group element is given the class of x space axis. Then it is transformed translated by the height of the inner drawing space. This is not something we have covered before, though it's been alluded to. To move the axis elements around, you have to move the G element in which they live in. In this case, we are moving the G element to the bottom of the inner drawing space. Finally, the X axis function is called. This works correctly because we have now defined the X scaling function, domain, and range. Next, we call d3.axis operator for the Y axis. First, the code appends an SVG group element to hold the Y axis. Then the group element is given the class of Y axis. Then the Y axis function is called. This works correctly because we have now defined the Y scaling function domain and range. Finally, we append text to the Y axis. This is new. This text is transformed by rotating it negative 90 degrees. Then the Y and DY attributes are defined. The style is defined as a text anchor and placed at the end of the Y axis. Finally, the text for the SVG text is defined. This places a small label on the Y axis. And then finally, we draw the line that is the graph of the data. This is the D3 pattern. We define the drawing space. We append a path. We use datum, data, since there is only one piece of data, the array. The path instructions will be generated by the D3 path generator functionality using that one array. Then we give the path a class of line. This is how the CSS knows to provide styling to the line. And finally, we add the attribute D, which is the D3 path generator function. This will take in the data that was passed into the datum and generate the path for us. One thing to notice here is that the passing of the data object is not explicit. D3 implicitly understands that it should use the data bound to the SVG path object. Thus, it is able to use the data passed into the datum call without having it specified. And that is the end of the callback function and the end of the D3.TSV function. When this is done, the graph will have been fully generated. Let's now build this part by part in JavaScript. JavaScript code build. Because the building of the chart happens inside of the callback function, we will use a more simple anonymous function. We do this in this way for two reasons. One, it is easier to do on the JavaScript console as we build the chart piece by piece. And two, it reinforces the idea of the callback function and how it works. Though to be honest, the preferred way of coding it when you code it into your web page is the way it's done in the example. That way it is clear that it is a callback function and it is all in one place. All right, to the JavaScript console. We start by saving the example data into the data.tsv file, which lives in the folder where we will start the Python simple HTTP server. Next, we start the Python simple HTTP server from the command line. Now we have the server going and have the data file ready to be served up. Next, we make sure the index.html file is saved in the right place and has D3 loaded into it. We can see the web page. We open the Chrome Developer Tools and test to make sure D3 loaded correctly, then clear the screen. D3 loaded correctly. Now we clear the screen. Next, we go step by step building the visualization. We start by defining the callback error and callback data variables which will be used to house the data we get back from the d3.tsv function. The first step from the example is defining the margins and the width and height of the inner drawing space. Next, we define the date parsing function. Next, define the x scaling function as well as the range of the function. Next, define the y scaling function as well as the range of the function. Remember to pay attention to the fact that the range has height first and then zero, which inverts the y-axis. Next, define the x-axis function and provide it with a scale and orientation. Next, define the y-axis function and provide it with a scale and orientation as well. Next, define the d3path generator function. Next, define the SVG container and the inner drawing space.
This is the first sign of anything occurring in the browser. Up to now, we have just been defining functions that will use or be used by the data that is passed in. Next is where we are going to differ a bit from the code of the example. Instead of defining an anonymous callback function that does all of the generating of the chart in one go, we'll define a callback function that assigns the data and error to variables. We'll then use these variables to build the line chart. Let's check what the d3.tsv call assigned to the callback error variable. The callback error is null, which means the d3.tsv call worked correctly. Let's check what the d3.tsv call assigned to the callback variable. The callback variable is an array of 1,280 elements, which means the d3.tsv call worked correctly. Let's take a look at the first element of this array. You can see that it is a JavaScript object that has the date defined as a string and the close defined as a string. Next, we use the d3 array for each iterator to go through the array and change the string values to either JavaScript date objects or numbers. Let's take a look now at the first element of this array. You can see that the values are no longer strings. The value date is a date and the close value is a number. To make sure the date is now a JavaScript object, we can use the type of JavaScript function, which tells us it is an object. To make sure the close is now a JavaScript number, we can use the type of JavaScript function, which tells us it is a number. Satisfied that we have JavaScript date objects and numbers, let's move on. Next, define the domain of the xscale function. Let's check to see what the extent was for the xscale. We can see that the lowest date is Tuesday, April 24th, 2007, and the highest date is Tuesday, May 1st, 2012. Next, define the domain for the Y scale function. Let's check to see what the extent was for the Y scale. We can see that the lowest stock price was 78.2, and the highest stock price was 636.23. Next, the X axis is created. Note again that the transform translate moves the x-axis group element to the bottom of the inner drawing space. On my screen, you can just see the start of the x-axis as Chrome developer tools are taking up about two-thirds of the web page. That said, you can see the 2008. If we click into the SVG group element for the inner drawing space, you can see the SVG group element with the class x space axis. This is the x-axis. Next the y-axis is created. You can see the y-axis and the price text anchor declaring that it is a price in dollars. If we click into the SVG group element for the inner drawing space, you can see the SVG group element with the class y space axis. This is the y-axis. Lastly, we create the line by using the d3 path generator. You can see the SVG path was generated. Why does it show up in a weird way? It shows up in a weird way because in the example, the styling was defined in the CSS. Here, because we gave the line no fill, stroke color, or stroke width, the line is visible and has a fill in it. Let's delete the path in the element section and this time provide the command with style attributes attached. You can see the path is now gone. Let's redefine the path now. And there we go. We have the chart. Let's close the Chrome developer tools to get a better look you can see the full picture. The only difference between this and the example was the styling applied to the various DOM elements. And with that, we built the basic chart line graph. We used data served from a web server and processed it through an asynchronous XHR call provided by the d3.tsv type specific method. The summary. This video provided a visual code walkthrough, a JavaScript code build, and the summary.